Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker here. I am back with a full stack of my cast iron cookware. Uh, what you see here, I have been amassing most of this since July of 2017. Uh, the first couple of pieces over there in the corner I got last year late as a form of prepping because cast iron can be uh, used over the open fire and is popular for camping and survival and things of that nature, which is why I started to get it. But it's very heavy, so um, I started to look for vintage cookware, which was, um, a lot of it was hand-tooled, not machined like it is today, with higher quality craftsmanship and very good quality iron back in the day. Um, what I have here is from the late 1800s all the way up to the present as in this Modern Lodge 12-inch uh, skillet. Um, some of the things that I've learned in picking this stuff up is if you get it at a like a flea market or a barn sale or when it's covered in rust just be very very careful that you uh, check it for cracks. You can hang it up you know, with one finger and it's hard to show on this, uh, it's hard to show, but you hang it up um, and then you just basically tap it, you know, ring it with the finger and if it has a ring to it, there's no cracks. It will, it'll sound more like a thud if there's cracks to it. You want to see if it is a spinner or not by putting it on a flat surface. And it's covered in rust, this one obviously is not, but if it's covered in rust, um, then it's it's really hard to tell. So those are the drawbacks of buying something covered in rust, but you can usually get it for a very good deal. I mean, you're talking pennies on the dollar or, you know, five bucks, three bucks, you know, really, really cheap uh, if you know where to look. Uh, if you want something that is collectible, that's going to hold or gain in value, or gain in value, especially if you strip them and reseason them. Something like this skillet here, it's an old Erie Griswold. Um, you purchase them at an antique shop or an antique mall, but not all of them are equal. You have to know where to go and you have to search a lot of them in your area. Some of them, some of them have a lot of vendors and the vendors do not know the value of some of these pans and some of them are overpriced. Uh, where I got this one, I got a good deal on it. But I also walked away from probably more than 10 skillets there that were overpriced for their, their condition or the make or what have you. So uh, just as those are some of the things to be wary of if you're looking at acquiring vintage cast iron. Uh, know the value. The most collectible is Griswold. Second collectible is Wagner Ware. And some of the other ones, like I believe that might be a Birmingham range and stove. Um, some of those are collectible, but the, the main ones that people look for are the Wagner Ware from Sydney, Ohio, and the Griswold from Erie, PA, USA. So without further ado, I'll get in to show you what I have here, and uh, uh, we'll go from there. Uh, one of the first pieces that I got was this Dutch oven. It had a lid on it that could be doubled as a skillet, and I thought, oh, that's great. And... Uh, but it, it comes really, uh, really, let me see if I can show you. Um, you can hear this one hasn't been stripped. I kind of seasoned it a little bit, um, but it hasn't really been stripped down and sanded. But that's very, very rough. Very, very rough. It doesn't matter if you don't care, if you're not cooking things like eggs where you want it to slide off and not stick, but... I probably need to eventually get to that one, but it's very heavy. It's a lodge, and I, and I had used that one previously to do eggs in or things I didn't want to um, stick, so I sanded it down with an Avanti 4-inch um, Pro Disc from Home Depot, and um, actually that's worked out quite well on that. So that one is a Dutch oven with a lid, but there's no handle. This one is another Dutch oven. It's got, a, you know, a, again, a lid on it, which can double as a, um, and I did kind of sand this down, but I was really new at it, and I'll probably eventually get around to re redoing this one. 
stripping it down and sanding this really really smooth so it is a good cooker but I've used that quite a bit and um, it is again a Dutch oven I think it's like a three quart something like that and I got this right when I first started to uh, buy the stuff it was sitting on my stovetop and there was a little bit of rust that somehow got there uh, sometimes when you have water from cooking I was storing it there and as you can see I'm running out of places to store all my cookware so this one here I'll probably end up uh, seasoning over that but not a big deal I'll just have to store it someplace different and then uh, a couple of other lodge pieces that I picked up these more recently here this one is a pancake griddle I sanded this down to really really smooth surface with a four inch sanding disc from Home Depot uh, I just put that on my uh, typical, you know, drill, uh, electrical drill. And again, it's a Lodge 8, just call it a 8, let me see what it says here. No, it's a 90, 90G, but it's a pancake griddle. It's supposed to be, I think it's like a 9-inch pancake griddle. Then I have a couple of loaf pans that I'm in the process of reseasoning. I stripped them down and, and uh, tried to sand them off, but these things are so tight it's very difficult to get in there and, and sand it down the way I wanted to, but I'll just season them up really good and just use them for meatloaf or bread or what have you on those. So, but a note on the uh, loaf pans, the vintage stuff, as far as this type of a pan, is very expensive, especially the Griswold. They run from 300 I've seen them listed as high as 700 I'd never pay that, but... This stuff does go for big mo big money on eBay. Not the Lodge. This is Modern Day Lodge. But I wanted to get something that was useful. I make a lot of meatloaf and I'd like to make bread. So there you go. Uh, I'll go to the, to the uh, start of my collection. These are number three skillets. I have three of them. I have an unmarked Wagner. I have a marked Wagner Ware from Sydney, Ohio. And I have a marked Griswold from Erie, PA. Uh, these were stripped and seasoned by me, and this one, is, they all three cook equally well. This one is a little bit pitted from rust, but it's still a non-stick. I put up a video showing me making a breakfast sandwich in it. It does very a very good job, this one. Um, again, I re-seasoned it, and you can see kind of the uh, round mill, milling. I don't know what they call that. Uh, in the iron. A lot of craftsmanship went into these older skillets. And this is an old Griswold and the same thing applies to it, but you can almost see it better on the uh, Wagner. But these do well. I wanted all three of them because I occasionally cook burgers and cook fish and I can't eat fish. My husband does, so I like to have different ones for different things that I'm using them for. Um, going on further, I have a fourth number three this one will probably more than likely be sold, uh, if not sold, gifted to somebody. And this was also reseasoned, and it's a bare bones good pan. So there, there goes that. Then I got th these two at a barn sale. They're both number five. As you notice, I don't have a number four. I'm still looking for a number four. They don't seem to be as common as the threes or fives that I've found. You seem to find these quite a bit. I've already run into um, a couple of others. One I sold already. It was unmarked. I redid it for um, somebody wanted some, something to do their breakfast eggs in and I gifted the other one to my son. This one is a small logo Griswold. Not as collectible as a large logo but a Griswold just the same and I wanted one for my collection. And this one is a number five. It's about eight and a half inches or so. Maybe a little bit smaller cooking surface than some of them. They're not all equal. But originally, a number five would have fit a number five ring on those old cook, cook stoves. But anyway, that is a Griswold. This one is a Wagner. And this one I picked up from an, at an antique shop. And once I cleaned it up, it had a little bit more wobble, slightly of a wobble. Um, than I would have, would have liked, but actually it cooks great, so it really doesn't matter. Um, it is a Wagner Ware number five, and then I have another one that I picked up. I think this one was from the barn sale, and this one I got really really cheap, 
and I stripped it and reseasoned it and cleaned it up and this one is a beautiful cooker it is a Wagner Ware from Sydney Ohio 1055 E so there you go on that one this one also um, I cleaned it up to almost like new this is a square skillet this is also vintage doesn't have made in the USA on it anything that does not have made in the USA on it was made before 1960 um, if you're new to cast iron and you're watching this now but this is a Wagner Ware Sydney L square skillet you don't find them as often so they're a little bit more collectible and it's got a nice thumb rest to it and I could imagine myself cooking two strip steaks in there and uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this one or not I we don't eat steak that much but uh, this one is a Wagner it's a little bit thicker than some of them and it would be great for searing meats at a high temperature and uh, there you go uh, the next one is a number six Wagner I haven't run into too many number sixes I would love to get a Griswold in number six and then if I pick up a third one uh, that'll be sold because how many of these do you actually need but this one I just used this morning to cook scrambled eggs for breakfast so uh, this is a nice skillet, a little bit larger, gives you a little bit more room to negotiate what you're cooking. But uh, number six Wagner Ware. And then we have up here a number, these are all number eights right here. Let's start with this one. This is a modern lodge. Um, it could be 10 years old, 20 years old. They really haven't changed the design that much in the last 30 years. But I sanded it down very, very, very smooth. I took a um, Avanti Pro disc to it. It was a it's a four inch disc from Home Depot to make this one great. You can do scrambled eggs for a couple of people in here. It's wonderful. And then of course I have this uh, mystery skillet. I believe it's an unmarked Wagner or unmarked Birmingham stove and range. The heat ring is indicative of Birmingham stove and range, or known as BSR, or the handle though looks like a Wagner pick it up and the raised number on the handle could be a Wagner so you know hard to say then I have two Griswolds here they're both large logo this one is a large upright logo the upright font it's a number eight I got this at an antique store easy when you find them at an antique store you can really test for the quality you're gonna pay a little bit more but you're not gonna be stuck with a dud this is a beautiful cooker. I'm going to keep this for my collection. And I stripped this down. It has a nice black color to it already. It had, I think I put like three or four coats on it. So there is the number eight Griswold. It's got a large logo on the back, upright, 704Z. And then we have an older pan. That was made from the 1930s to the 1950s, somewhere in there. And here's an old Erie uh, Griswold made around the same time, but probably earlier because it has the heat ring that people use for these on their wood, wood stoves, cooking stove. This is a 704E, and it's got a large slant logo, makes them slightly more collectible. Number eight, again, I got this in an antique shop. Stripped it down, completely stripped it down, so it still has that deep brown look to it which I kind of actually like it <laughs> that way but that is a wonderful pan this is a little bit more collectible than that one is so one of these will be sold I'm going to keep one of them for the collection moving right along I've got a Wagner Ware Sydney O it's a number 9 1059 I believe that's either nickel or chrome plated um, that's actually I did season it three or four times and sand it down oops very smooth surface, slightly larger when you need a larger pan to cook, you know, a large amount of ground beef or what have you. Again, that's a number nine. Got this at the barn sale, and it, when, when it was cleaned up, it had a little bit of a wobble to it. Um, so when I sanded it down, I kind of sanded it a little bit back here too, and I kind of, you know, sanded it a little bit enough just to take out the... Take out the um, you know the little bit of uh, wobble to it uh, I'm not selling it I'm gonna keep it so it cooks great for my purpose and uh, that's all it that matters and then we have let's see this big 
number 10 uh, 12 inch lodge I sanded it with an Avanti I stripped it down and I sanded it down also with an Avanti Pro disc this one's big it's really thick it's heavy it's hard to lift it's hard to turn over I'm glad it has the, the assist handle on it um, it's great for cast iron pizza and larger heavy dishes um, one thing about the large or the heavy metal skillets is they retain their heat a lot longer than maybe a thinner skillet like this would. You can definitely see the difference even between the Wagner and the Modern Lodge. Um, maybe a little bit more with the Griswold. Here is a Griswold, very thin, thinner than the Lodge. So I use them for different reasons, but this one is very heavy duty. This one here is a chicken, a number eight Wagner chicken cooker. If you want to cook up a bunch of chicken for a recipe or a casserole, uh, Wagner Ware Sydney O. You don't see these quite as often. They're not, uh, they're common, but not as common as some of these others. And then we're going to go over here to the estate sale find. If you watch my recent video, this is now has three coats of seasoning on it. It's my Dutch oven. Um, it's a number eight unmarked Birmingham Stove and Range or BSR. It's got the dimple pattern without a, there's really a random pattern to it, is the telltale sign. And it had a little bit of rust on it. I had to remove it. It's seasoning up just beautifully. And it's nice and smooth on the inside of the Dutch oven. It's got the bail handle, light enough that I can pick it up and turn it over and it's an 8R on the bottom. So, really, really like that. It was hard to season, though. Very, very difficult. I still probably want to give it one more coat. And then um, we have a, a kettle here. It's a three-bean bean kettle, three-legged bean kettle. It has a gate mark to it, so it shows it was made in the uh, late 1800s. There were two molds, this side and this side. They forged them together. And... Uh, this is a nice pot. You can hang it over a fire. You can put coals underneath it on the ground, what have you. These are very versatile. And I got this for about 18 bucks in an estate sale. That was about 20 or so. The, that's a good deal. These are very collectible. And this one with a handle is very collectible too. You usually don't see a lid and a handle on a pot all in the same item like that. So I was very thrilled to, to pick that up. And finally, last but not least, whoops, I don't know if I showed you this one yet. It's my cornbread stick, uh, stick pan. And uh, don't know if I'm going to keep this or not. I don't know if I'm going to use it, but it'd be kind of fun to make cornbread in this with chili. So it's actually getting to be the weather to do that. This is a Wagner Ware made in the USA. So this was made in the 60s before they went out of business. It's still old though. It's still over 50 years old, so it has a little bit of uh, collectible value, but they're they're you see them everywhere, so they're not that big of a deal. I probably won't get any more of these. They're a real pain to season and clean up. It was a pain. <laughs> and finally, last but not least, this is getting long. This I picked up just recently at an antique mall. This is a number 10 large slant logo Griswold. Old Erie. This was made between 1905 and 1907. It's a 716A. Cleaned up beautifully. It's been seasoned three times with Crisco, according to the Griswold and um, Wagner Society. I use Crisco. And this one is just gorgeous. It's very light, very collectible. And what makes it collectible is the rarity. You don't see too many of those. They sell for anywhere from $150 to $250 on eBay. I paid $45 for it at an antique mall. This antique mall that I go to has over 100 and probably 150 vendors or so. And the vendors don't always know what they have and all the things they sell in their booths. So a regular antique store... You're probably going to pay more for it. It just depends. You have to look around. Um, but this one obviously didn't know the value when I when I took it up to buy it. Uh, the guy that checked me out, 
he said, oh, Griswold, he knew right away. And that's a very collectible piece. So this is what I have. This video is quite long. But if you want to collect uh, cast iron, some of the things to uh, know about, hopefully I've been able to share with you on these. Uh, these have all been stripped and re-seasoned and cleaned up. Uh, some are still in process of, but like I said, if I don't do this now, some of these items could be sold. So, anyway, um, I did sell a cauldron the other day, and I sold it for four times what I paid, because I paid, I got it for a really good price. And uh, this stuff does sell. People do like it, and it's not as, I don't think it's as common as it used to be, because people are realizing uh, that it can last for centuries if taken care of. Anyway, guys, I thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Click on my icon if you'd like to subscribe and haven't already. And uh, go make it a great day.